What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today's Sit or Sell video is gonna be pretty different than really any of my other Sit or Sell videos and that's mainly because of one thing, Yeezy Day. This Yeezy Day, or I guess Yeezy Days because it's on August 2nd and on August 3rd, is going to be one of the most insane sneaker release days of the last like five years. And I mean even more so than last Yeezy Day and the Yeezy Day before that. And that's because not only are we getting a bunch of Yeezy releases, I mean like 20 different pairs of Yeezys that we know about, but we're also getting re-releases of some of the most popular Yeezys of all time. And to be honest with you, I think the whole day is gonna be a mess, but hey, I'm still excited about it. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If this is your first time checking out one of my Sit or Sell videos, basically what we do is we take a look at all of the sneaker releases or all of the important sneaker releases in the first half or second half of any given month. In this case, it's the first half of August 2022. I let you know what I think about each one of these releases, but most importantly, whether I think each one of these releases is gonna sit on shelves or sell out. And because it feels like almost all of the Yeezy releases of the entire year are condensed down into just one day, I'm actually gonna save that day till the end of the video, even though it's the first day of the month or the second day of the month and we'll actually start off the video talking about some of the other releases that take place after Yeezy Day and then get into the Yeezys at the end of the video. But I guess with all that being said, let's just dive right into it. Starting things off on August 4th, we've got the Air Jordan 12 Low White and Black. So this shoe is apparently releasing to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Jordan brand being in China. And I've got to say, I didn't realize how big Jordan brand was in China until I visited China, actually Shanghai back in 2019, and I went to a Jordan brand store and it was genuinely one of the most insane Jordan brand and or Nike stores that I'd ever been to. It was huge, it was like four stories tall in the center of Shanghai, it was crazy. And not only that, but the NBA is huge in China, so it makes sense why there's a lot of Jordan brand fans out there. So at first glance, this shoe just kind of looks like a low top Air Jordan 12 taxi, but when you get closer to the shoe, you'll realize that the mud guard of the sneaker actually features some sort of like holographic pattern. It's kind of a wild look, and I'll be honest, it's not one that I'm the biggest fan of. I would prefer like a standard black and white Air Jordan 12 low, but it is what it is. I think a lot of people will probably be into this sneaker and I'm assuming that this shoe may be somewhat limited and I think that's a very important factor when it comes to this shoe sitting or selling I feel like if this shoe is not that limited it will probably sit on shelves because visually this shoe is not the most exciting pair of Air Jordan 12s in the world and again that holographic thing might turn some people off but if the shoe is very limited which it seems like it might be because if you go on stock extra goat the resale price right now like four days before the release is double the retail price which makes me think that there's not a lot of stock available and if there's not a lot of stock available I do think this shoe will will probably end up selling out. Moving on to August 5th, we've got the AJKO1 in Rush Orange. So it's been interesting over the last year to see Jordan Brand start re-releasing AJKO colorways, a sneaker which honestly is pretty shrouded in mystery. We don't even know exactly why this sneaker released. It's thought that it was to combat the knockoffs back in the 80s, but no one's really sure. And even though the shoe looks a lot like an Air Jordan 1 and features a lot of the same colorways, it's actually a totally different silhouette, and instead of coming in leather, it comes in more of a canvas upper. And this Rush Orange colorway is also pretty interesting. It comes with a primarily white upper accented by bright orange hits, and it looks a lot like the Syracuse Dunks, which makes sense because it is inspired by Syracuse. While this is a pretty weird shoe, I think there is still a lot of hype behind the AJKO1 silhouette, and for that reason, I do think this shoe is probably going to sell out. Then rounding off August 5th, we've got one last release, and it's not actually a pair of sneakers. It's this pretty much broke hat. Ever since I started wearing this hat in videos, I got a ton of comments of people asking where they could get this hat. And honestly, for the last couple months, it's just been a sample. But because of the insane amount of positive feedback we've been getting for this hat, we decided to finally release it, and it's officially dropping on apothecary.com this Friday, August 5th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Now personally, I'm a huge fan of trucker hats, so we had to make it a trucker hat. It's got the pretty much broke text right there on the front of the hat in this bubble text which is super cool you've got apothecary embroidered on the back and then my favorite part of the entire hat is this hidden million dollar bill so if you buy this hat you're getting a, a fake million dollar bill in addition to your hat so it's got to be worth something not a million dollars but something because apothecary is primarily a sock company I get really excited whenever we get to design something that's not socks this one in particular this is probably my favorite non sock thing that we've ever done and I honestly can't wait for you guys to be able to grab it so again they drop on August 5th apothecary.com at 11 a.m. Eastern time moving on to August 6th we've got the Air Jordan 5 dark Concord. There's actually a lot of really great Jordan releases happening in very quick succession. Maybe they're trying to sort of combat Yeezy Day a little bit, I don't know, but there's a lot of heat dropping. And I actually think that the Air Jordan 5 Dark Concord is an incredibly clean colorway. It comes with a primarily white leather upper accented by a black midsole and purple shark teeth, and you've also got a reflective tongue accented by a purple Jumpman. I mean, it's not the grapes. I would have preferred to get the Grape 5s over these, but it's still a solid colorway and a shoe that I think a lot of people will be excited about. Now, from what I can tell, it does look like there will be a lot of 
pairs of these available. I have no idea the actual stock numbers, but I've seen a bunch of people already drop reviews. The resale price is pretty low already, and it's not hard to get a pair even before the shoe releases. So all that combined makes me think that there's gonna be a lot of pairs available. In fact, I think this is probably gonna be a general release. And in 2022, GR Jordans, no matter how clean they are, just don't seem to sell out the way that they did in 2020. And for that reason, no matter how clean this Grape 5, or it's not actually a Grape 5, it's the Dark Concord 5. That's funny, it's kind of a grape name. Regardless, I just don't see this shoe selling out. Moving on to August 11th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 4 Canyon Purple. So this shoe bears a striking resemblance to a friends and family pair of Travis Scott 4s. And I think because of that, there's actually a lot of hype behind this shoe. I mean, besides the association to Travis Scott and his friends and family pairs, the shoe itself is actually pretty clean. The upper of the shoe comes in this very hairy purple suede, which I really like, accented by a very toned down green on the midsole and on the eyelets. Of course, you've got black rounding out the look and a couple pops of red throughout the shoe. It's a good looking sneaker. It's not a mind blowing sneaker, but but it's definitely a clean sneaker overall. And again, it looks just like a friends and family pair of Travis Scott's. And I think that's gonna be the main selling point for this shoe. Is it a shoe that I'm personally gonna try and pick up? Probably not. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with this shoe. I just don't feel like I need it in my life. That being said, there are a lot of people out there who probably do feel like they need it in their life. And for that reason, I think this shoe could sell out. I don't know for sure. It is possible that this shoe could be a GR and it might just end up sitting. But from what I've heard, it just seems like a lot of people are stoked on this shoe. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. And then finally, rounding off the non-Yeezy releases, we've got the Air Jordan 7 Citrus. So this is actually the first time the Citrus 7s have retroed since their initial release back in 2006. The shoe features a primarily black nubuck upper accented by bright yellow stitching and of course a bright yellow jump man on the top of the ankle. And then on the midsole of the shoe, you've got a bright yellow and a bright red hit. It's definitely one of the more subtle Air Jordan 7 releases and I think that's the reason why it hasn't released in a while. Apparently the shoe is releasing to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Air Jordan 7, obviously not a this colorway because this colorway is not 30 years old but it's definitely a release that I know Jordan fans in particular are going to be very excited about because it's a shoe that we just haven't had in so long. Now as to whether this shoe will sit on shelves or sell out I think the answer lies in whether this shoe will be limited or not limited. I feel like because this shoe isn't like a classic Air Jordan 7 colorway yes it's an older colorway but it's not one of those like retros that you think about. I feel like unless this shoe is limited which I don't think it is I think it's going to be a GR I think this shoe will probably end up sitting on shelves. Maybe not in all sizes but probably sitting. But now let's get into Yeezy Day. And let me tell you, Yeezy Day this year is gonna be absolutely insane. So to fill you guys in on Yeezy Day, essentially what's gonna happen is it's gonna take place over two separate days, August 2nd and August 3rd. Now apparently the reason this event is split up over two days is the same reason it was split up over two days last year. And that's because each day is for a different region. So August 2nd is gonna be the Americas and some other outlying regions. And then August 3rd is gonna be Europe, the UK, Asia, and I believe some other areas as well. Now apparently the way these releases are gonna take place for your specific region are throughout the entire day. So they're gonna start probably around seven o'clock in the morning and end sometime at night. And even though we know a lot of the sneakers that are supposed to be releasing throughout the day, we don't know what time these sneakers are releasing, we don't know in what order they're releasing, and we also don't know if there's any surprise releases, which I've heard that there are. So like last year, it's already setting up to be an insane day. Now apparently on August 2nd in the United States, the releases are happening on three different places or three different websites. You've got Yeezy Supply, you've got the Adidas Confirmed app, and you've got Adidas's website. Now again, no one really knows what time shoes are releasing and also what platforms they're releasing on so we don't know which shoes are releasing on the Adidas confirmed app and which ones are releasing on Yeezy supply and things like that it's all very confusing but based on last year it looks like the different platforms will have different releases at different times you're not gonna have a Yeezy supply release at the same time as the Adidas confirmed release the releases will kind of cycle between platforms throughout the day so you kind of got to be on all three I know it's insane but that's just the way Yeezy day is so I'm really trying to mentally prepare myself for this because I know I'm gonna get a bunch of L's I think the best chance that I have is on the Adidas confirmed Death, especially because I've actually got plans on the second. I've got to be out and about throughout the day, so I can't be sitting on yeezysupply.com or even adidas.com. So we'll see what happens, but uh, man, it's going to be a crazy day. And let me tell you, some of these releases are absolutely insane. So I've compiled the list of all of the shoes that are thought to be releasing on Yeezy Day. There is a bunch of shoes in a bunch of different silhouettes and a bunch of different colorways. And the way I'm gonna do this is go down this list in order of silhouettes and try and categorize them that way. Talk about some of the shoes that are dropping, also some of the possible surprises that we may be getting. And I guess at the end of the list, we'll give everything a sit or a sell rating. So let's get things started with the one and only pair of Yeezy 450s that are slated to drop on Yeezy Day. And that's the brand new Yeezy 450 Utility Black. So this utility black Yeezy 450 is an entirely black Yeezy 450 and what's interesting about that is that I feel like we've already had a black 450 very recently. Now apparently this shoe differs from that last 450 because it's entirely black versus the last one which had a little brown accent on the heel but other than that 
it's kind of more the same. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad looking sneaker, but it is a second pair of Yeezy 450s in almost entirely black. The next release is apparently the return of the Yeezy 500 in Super Moon Yellow. So like the 450s, this actually seems like the only colorway of the 500s to be releasing on Yeezy Day, which I'm actually kind of surprised about. We've had a lot of recent Yeezy 500 releases, and usually on Yeezy Day, they restock a lot of pairs that have recently released, and it's interesting to me that they're restocking the Super Moon Yellows, which is one of the earlier Yeezy 500 pairs. So not exactly sure why they're doing that, especially because the Super Moon Yellow is one of the less popular Yeezy 500s, but who knows? Next up, we've got apparently the only pair of Yeezy 700 V3s restocking, and that's the Yeezy 700 V3 as AL. So as you probably know, this is the very first colorway of the Yeezy 700 V3s. And honestly, after this release, I feel like a lot of the 700 V3s just weren't as exciting as that shoe. Maybe it's because it was the first version of that silhouette, and it's a pair which, honestly, I kind of wish I hadn't gotten rid of. There's just something about that light cream colored upper accented by the black around the ankle area, and of course, the glow in the dark midfoot cage that just makes that shoe feel kind of special. The good Good news is, if you're like me and you want another pair of these, or maybe your first pair of these, they are restocking on Yeezy Day. Next up, it does look like we're getting a lot of pairs of Yeezy 700 V2s. Unfortunately, none of them are new colorways, but there are some heavy hitters here. So going through the list, we've got the 700 V2 Tefras, we've got the Hospital Blues, we've got the Antas, which are the all black ones, and of course, we've got the OG colorway, the Statics, which in my opinion is by far the best 700 V2 colorway. I don't mind all these other colorways, they're all fine, but none of them are shoes that I would really spend that much money on. I don't know why, I just don't love them that much. The 700 V2 is a pretty solid silhouette, but the colorways have been lacking for the 700 V2s, which kind of sucks. But the Statics are restocking a shoe, which I know a lot of people are excited about. It has already restocked recently, but uh, I think people are still going to be stoked on that one. And personally, I think it's going to be by far the most popular Yeezy 700 V2 to restock on Yeezy Day. After that, we've got two classic Yeezy 700 V1s returning. We've got the Analogs, and of course, we've got my favorite Adidas Yeezy of all time, the Wave Runners. I absolutely love that shoe. I still have my OG pair from back in 2017. I really need to get a second pair because I just love that shoe and I beat my pair to the ground. For some reason, I'll keep getting pairs, like I'll trade for them on Trade Block or somehow I'll find a pair in a store for a good price. I'll grab them and then I'll immediately regret it because I'm like, I already have a pair of these. Why do I need a second pair? And then I'll wear my original pair and realize this shoe is beat. So I definitely need a new one and hopefully I can grab one on Yeezy Day, but we'll have to wait and see. Also, I'm hoping the demand for the Wave Runner isn't that crazy because we've had so many restocks of the shoe. Unfortunately though, I think it, it really is just one of the most popular Yeezy 700s of all time and Yeezys of all time. So because of that, people will still want to grab it. So still going to be kind of a pain. And then finally rounding off the Yeezy 700 V1 releases, we've got a brand new colorway and that's the high res blue colorway. So this shoe is kind of like a Smurf 700 V1. It's an all blue 700 V1 with like a bright red accent on the midfoot of the shoe and then some black details on the upper. It's a weird looking sneaker and I don't understand when Kanye decides to make a shoe a bright color, why he makes the entire shoe that color. Why can't he just add bright accents? Like the whole shoe doesn't need to be bright blue. I don't know, it's baffling to me, it doesn't make sense. It's just so far removed from his aesthetic, at least what I think his aesthetic is. I'm obviously wrong because he's the one releasing this shoe, but it's just not really a shoe or a colorway that I'm at all interested in. But regardless, it is a brand new 700 V1 colorway. People are always hyped on new 700 V1s, and because of that, I do think this is gonna be a popular release. Next, we've got three different colorways of the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runners dropping. Now, two of these colorways we've already seen before, the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner Onyx, which is the black pair, and the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner Sand, which is sort of like a light tan color pair. It actually looks a lot like the original pair, the Ararat colorway, which apparently is the surprise pair that could be returning on Yeezy Day. I in no way can confirm that. I've just heard rumors around the internet. The Ararat colorway is by far the most limited of all the Foam Runner colorways, and it would be really nice to see that shoe return. And then the final Foam Runner that's releasing is a brand new colorway called the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner MX Carbon. Now this shoe is absolutely fire in my opinion. It's sort of a marbled black, neon green, and pink colorway and I think it looks absolutely insane. I love the MX Foam Runners. I think they're all incredibly clean. I love how they mix up all the different colors in the upper of the shoe, but this one in particular is something that we've never seen before. It features a very dark primary color, black, which is accented by a bright neon green and a bright pink, and I think overall it's an incredibly eye-catching colorway and a shoe that I would love to have, and it's definitely a sneaker that I'm going for. Now, unfortunately, because it's a new Foam Runner colorway, I know it's gonna be very popular, and it's definitely gonna be one of the most popular releases of the day, and because of that, it's probably gonna be almost impossible to grab. 
Patreon. Next up, we've got a brand new Adidas Yeezy Knit Runner, the Faded Azure. So this colorway is pretty wild. It's kind of like a bluish greenish knit runner. And what's crazy about this shoe is that I thought that this shoe was actually a photo that had been inverted. Like maybe it was a picture of the original knit runners that had been inverted and the colors have been messed with a little bit, but no, apparently it's a real shoe and that's kind of crazy. So the bottom half of the shoe comes in sort of a muddy greenish blue and then the top half comes in a bright blue similar to those blue 700s that we talked about earlier. And overall, it's not a bad looking shoe, but it's not a sneaker that I would ever really want. It's nice to see Kanye and Yeezy trying something completely different and doing a colorway that you don't really see a lot of, but it's just not a shoe that I think is going to have that much popularity and that much staying power. That said, it is still a brand new colorway of the Knit Runner, and because of that, I think people are going to be hyped on it. I also think it could be pretty limited, and so if that's the case, the shoe will be very popular, but who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. Next up, we've got a bunch of Yeezy 350 V2s returning. The first is the Yeezy 350 V2 Hyperspace, which I believe was originally an Asia exclusive. Now apparently it's dropping all over the place, which is great. After that, we've got the 350 V2 Sesames, which are actually one of my favorite 350 V2s. They remind me a lot of the Moonrock 350 V1s. They're a very clean, almost entirely tan look, and I dig them. I wish I had a pair of them, and this is my chance to grab a pair for retail, so I'm excited about that. And then finally, by far the most popular 350 V2 that will be releasing on Yeezy Day, we are getting a retro or a return of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Red Stripe. Now this shoe is kind of special to me because it was my first pair of 350 V2s ever, and I had it for years, ended up selling it, but it was one of my favorite 350 V2s ever, and it's an incredibly clean shoe. As you guys know, a majority of the shoe comes in black, but the main detail on the sneaker, the iconic portion of the shoe, is that bright sort of pinkish reddish stripe along the side. I mean, we've known for a while that this shoe is probably going to restock, but the fact that we're actually getting it in the very near future is super exciting, and I can't wait to try and grab a pair. I'm definitely going to try and grab one. Hopefully the sizing's been fixed. It probably hasn't, but we'll have to wait and see. And then finally, we get to the heavy hitter of heavy hitters, the shoe that absolutely everyone is going for, at least I think everyone's going for, and that's the return of the Yeezy Boost 350 Turtle Dove, the original 350. And man, this shoe returning is crazy. It's been almost seven years since this shoe first released. Now, even though I'm very excited about this release and I will absolutely be trying to grab a pair of these, I do have some questions. And my main question is, is the construction of this shoe going to be exactly the same as the original? Like, is this shoe gonna fit a full size too big like the original? Is the outsole of this shoe painted like the original and you'd have to repaint it after wearing this shoe like five or six times because it wears off so quickly? Is this shoe going to be the same as the 2015 version or is this gonna be a remade version of that shoe? I'd love to know. And honestly, I have no idea. I haven't really heard anything from anybody about whether this shoe is a remade version of the Turtle Doves or whether it's literally a shot for shot remake of the shoe. I hope it's a new version of the shoe. I would love to be able to grab a size nine and have it actually fit like a size nine and not like a size 10. I would love to have a rubber outsole that isn't painted so it doesn't wear off very quickly. I would love for these changes to be made, but who knows if they're actually made or not. I personally think that this shoe is probably gonna be very similar to the original, if not exactly the same. I hope that that's not the case. I have heard that there could be half sizes, which we didn't get with the original, so it's possible that they could have made some changes, but we're really just gonna have to wait and see, and I will absolutely be grabbing a pair to review for you guys to let you know whether this shoe is the same or whether it's different. Um, I'm super excited about this release, and this is absolutely a shoe that I will pay resale for if I have to. But as of right now, those are pretty much all of the releases that we know about for Yeezy Day 2022. Again, it is very possible and probably even likely that we'll get some surprise releases like the Ararat Foam Runners or maybe even a new pair of 350s, who knows? But I gotta tell you, I'm so excited, I cannot wait. And even though I probably won't be able to grab anything for retail, it's still gonna be a really fun day. So I'm actually editing this video right now, and since recording this video yesterday, they've actually apparently leaked a bunch more Yeezys dropping on Yeezy Day that I'm not able to talk about, but here's a picture of them. There's a bunch more Yeezys dropping. But that pretty much wraps up the entire video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on some of the sneakers that are releasing this month, in particular, some of the Yeezys that are releasing during Yeezy Day and which pair you're looking forward to most. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.